Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and to another episode of Messing Around on the Railway so what you've just witnessed is a class 31 and a class 24 doing its rounds on the railway uh, mainly testing the new point um, that we had fitted last week and um, talking about last week's video um, we've had some great feedback yet again. Um, some of you are going to do some track work repairs of your own, which is great. Um, yeah, I think the video came at the right time for some of you guys. So, what are we doing here at the Northeastern pub? Well, if you can imagine, before it was turned into a pub, it was a bakery at one point. So if it was a bakery, where would it have got its flour from? Yep, it would have got its flour from a mill. And the mill would have been next door on this wasteland. So that's what this video is all about. We're going to put an old redundant mill here, right next door to the bakery. No, I mean pub. So let's have a look at the idea I have for this redundant mill. Right, so here we are, we're back at the bench and we're looking at an old photograph of a mill on Cleeton Hills and um, and this is what I am planning to put next door to the pub. Um, if you look closely at the photograph you can see the Cleeton Hills water tower there. So looking at this photograph we're looking from south to north, so if I was standing here looking at the mill, I'd be facing north. And um, yeah, um, this photograph um, just shows the doorway and two windows, and it's a repeat image on the opposite side. Uh, there's no doors window here or here. Um, this mill far as I can remember has all never had a top on it. Um, it might have done it at one point but as growing up around this area um, I've never noticed that there was never a top on it. Not in my time anyway. Probably back in the 17, 1800s there would have been a top on it with a great big uh, set of sails and, uh, and everything. So this is what I'm going to use as a guide for the mill next door to the pub. Right, I'm going to cheat a little bit here because I'm going to use this old yarn corn as it were. So I'm just going to cut this down to size um, because it's already mostly the same shape. As you can see it's, it's, it's conical in design. So yeah, so I shall cut this to size and then we'll see where we go from there. Right, so I've worked out the dimensions for the mill um, just by using this door entrance. So I've measured from the floor to the lintel as it were and that's 18. So by measuring that it works out at four and a half times 18 mil. But I'm not using 18 mil as a guide. I'm using the average um, door height as it were on double O gauge buildings which could be anything between 20 mil and 25 mil depending on the, the period of the building you're going to make um, so I'm stuck with 22 mil so I'm doing 4 times 22 that's 88 and this little bit here rounds it up to 96 so the overall height of the mill is 96 and then it's still got to stand on this plinth but uh, we'll, we'll look at that in more detail as we go on. So now I'm cutting up this um, yarn cone. Uh, it's quite thick, as you can see. It's three millimeters thick. So I'm cutting it, and then once we've cut this, we can work out what I'm going to do with the mill. Whether I'm going to cover it in card, or I'm going to inscribe the stone so we'll see how we get on 
Right, so I started to mark this one out and I thought to myself, that looks ridiculously thin. And then I looked at the bottom half of this cone and I thought, yeah, that looks far better than that. And it's about the same height, give or take a few mil. So I'll put that aside. That can be used for something else. This is the one I'm going to work with. So I shall start marking this out. And finally, I have now marked out for the doors and the windows. As you can see, one set either side. So now I've got, I've got to um, cut these out. Um, it's, it's going to be interesting because I, there's no support uh, underneath. Maybe I could have marked them on the inside and then pressed down and cut them out from the outside. That's all being well, but how do I do the windows? It's, uh, it's a complex little little job this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to brand new blade again and start cutting away a little bit at a time on the outside very steadily one little score at a time starting from the corners and working out and I can feel that cutting through um, already so this may take a while uh, the interesting part was trying to work out the centers. Um, in the end, I measured the width across here um, and then marked it to get the centers and then used the square like so, putting it flat on to the mill marking it with a pencil down the bottom and then drawing a line up and I've done the same there so that line should be squared to the building and then drawing a line up and hopefully once the doors and windows are cut out you should be able to see right through them but um, let's carry on cutting first right so I've finally cut through the first window and it's it's furred up on the inside as you can see there and it's furred up on the edges as well so what I'm going to do I'm just going to put some super glue on those edges let it absorb into the card and right at the end when I've done all the windows I can then go around with a file and file them and make them a little bit better on the inside, I'll probably use a little bit of um, sandpaper, probably 120 grit, and uh, clean that up. So yeah, I've just put some sip glue on the edge for now, and that will go rock hard, and it'll be a lot easy, easier to make those edges a bit more squarer. Well that took a while, um, the windows and the doors are now um, cut out and I've already put some super glue on them so we'll leave that to harden off, it's not quite hardened off yet and then what we'll do, we'll just sand those rough edges as you can see there, we'll sand them off and uh, we'll square up the edges a bit better with a file. Right, so we'll put that on one side and then we'll um, look at the base of the mill, or this section here that runs around the mill. Um, there is a path that runs around the mill because if you go that way then you can turn left or right there's a slight gradient, you can actually walk around the mill. And this is what I'm going to use for the base. It's not um, fully to scale because of space restrictions on the layout so what I've done is I've just made it so it's just 20 millimeters off the side here. Uh, the photograph looks like it's about 30, 35 millimeters. So I've, I'm making a little bit of a compromise here. Um, so if we have a closer look at this five piece of fiber board, you can see I've pre-marked it 
for carving. So it's about two mil off the bottom there. And it's, if you notice in the photograph, it slopes up either side there and there. So all this here has to be carved out, and we'll have to do the same on this side as well. We've marked that with a pencil, a couple of millimeters, and then we'll carve that out. And then we'll just get some sandpaper and just gently rub that away to create a path that runs around the whole mill. So yeah, so that then would sit on there. Like so. so. While it's there, I'll draw a pencil line on the inside because then I can paint it and add some stones and shingle for the inside because that's what was in there the last time I looked. So, yeah, so all that can be painted. And I might even throw some big stones in there because I remember um, there was some really big stones in there. I think one of them was a big round stone. So I could do, add some little details like that to that. So, so I'm just getting my scalpel and just running it just deep enough to cut a line into it if you like and then we can just chisel out from the side. So I'll do that and I'll just cut that away. a little bit at a time. And then I'm just it's all about carving now. And so I want to leave a little bit of a step there and then just bring that slope. As you can see I've left a little bit of a step there and the rest of it will just radius it off. What I might have to do is to fill in some of the deep cuts I got there with some PVA uh, wood glue. Right, so that, that's done. We've got a nice slope either side, as you can see. Uh, which will lead up to the doorway. So let's just put the mill on there. So yeah, that's, that's what we're looking for. So you can imagine that being painted and greenery added. Oops, it's the wrong way around. Let's put it, put it there. Yeah. yeah, that's how it should be. Right, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm cutting some stones into the edge of this fibre board. It's quite easy to do. I'm just doing a series of stabbing marks. Um, as you can see, it looks quite realistic at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll score a line. And then I'll just stab fibre board like so. And it's creating which looks like lots of little stones. As you can see. And this is what it looks like uh, now that I've finished um, cutting out these stones. Uh, I think that's going to look quite realistic once it's painted. And in a few places I've uh, actually pulled out the stones so there's some stones missing. So yeah, this tip, by the way, I picked up from Chris over at uh, Wheezy Models, because um, he does some um, dioramas, World War II dioramas, and he cuts the um, sheet out just like this for bricks and um, stonework, so yeah. So yeah, I think that will look pretty good when it's painted. Meanwhile, back at the mill, I'm just filing off all these edges now, getting them flat and removing any of the furred up 
hard. I'm just using a file for this job. And uh, yeah, it just seems to be working. Some rough edges as well, which I'll remove. I've already um, sanded the insides and got rid of the rough on the inside, so that's just with a bit of sandpaper wrapped around the old thing <laughs> just to get in there. It's, uh, it's quite tight in there. Glad I went for this size, not the smaller ones. Right, so that took a while to clean up these edges. So now I'm starting to scribe the card with a pen. Um, it's worked before in the past where I've scribed roofs and yards and that. So I thought, well, why not have a go on this? I mean, I could wrap it in stone sheet. Um, but I'd have to cut four pieces and you'd probably end up seeing the joints but this way you won't be able to see the joints and um, I think it's quite straightforward to do um, just like in the photograph the stones are very very random uh, as you can see I'll just quickly show you the as you can see that there's no uniformity in, in these stones at all so it's quite um, randomly stones as they put them together I suppose they were back in them days so so hopefully I can emulate that by pressing the ink into the card and hopefully it'll show up once it's painted um, you don't want to make these stones too big that's, that's the only trouble um, so really keep them really as small as you can and then just keep scribing hard with a pen. Like so. Just before I start marking out um, on the top edge there, I have sealed the top with some super glue. As you can still see, it's still a bit damp. And the idea of that is when I start marking stones here to the top I'll just get uh, the V shape of my file and just score the marks into the top um, otherwise the card will just fur up and you won't see the detail so by hardening that top edge you'll be able to see the detail by using the super glue so yeah I'm slowly getting there as you can see it's gonna it's gonna take a while to do this but uh, I think it's going to work out um, quite well once it's painted. So I shall carry on. So with the super glue hardened, um, as you can see, I've marked some of the top ridge stones there. So what I'm doing is just picking out a stone and then just using the edge of the file to go across. And that should give me a nice crisp edge. For the stones. Like so. And this is what it's going to look like in position. Um, we're almost uh, there with the detailing. It has been scribed all the way around. And uh, yeah, I think it'll look quite neat there. Um, yes, yeah, so well, let's go back to the bench and um, we can get a closer look at this. Right, so now we can have a, a closer look at the scribing. Um, so, as you can see, the stonework is quite random, uh, just like it is in the photograph. There's no uniformity there at all. Um, as you can see there, I have um, scribed the top using the file, so the stones look um, like they've got an edge to them. And I've also scribed inside the 
um, windows if you like as you can see there so hopefully all this will look quite realistic now on the inside I could not repeat that on the inside first of all I can't get the pen in there but what I have done I've managed to just highlight a few lines there so it looks like it might have been plastered and you can see that the um, there's the odd um, um, lines there representing stones and of course I managed to scribe in the lintels for the windows and I've done similar to the doorway there so you can just look in you can see a little bit there so we can put this to to one side for the moment and concentrate on the base now I've started to carve the inner circle of this base if I just zoom back a little bit you can see a bit more right because I remember there was a, a ledge so this would be the ledge here if I just get it in the camera so I've got to carve all the middle out and just leave a little bit uh, there for to glue the the mill onto it. So as you can see that's all pre-sloped like we did earlier. So we've got a, a ledge so that would be a little step over onto the soil that was inside. So all I'm doing there is I'm just using a scalpel to cut that out and try and get get it level as best as I can because obviously I'm cutting um, at an angle to try and take some of this out so it's not going to be easy but we'll see how we get on so I managed to scrape it out what I did in the end is crisscross it that way and then crisscross it cross it that way and it's just got the blade just scrape it and uh, just take it up to the line that I've uh, cut through originally so what I'll do now is just try and smooth it off a little bit with a little bit of sandpaper see if we can get it a little bit flatter and then I'll pour some polyfiller into that to get it flat and fill in some of these deep gouges and uh, hopefully that should work so I've mixed up some polyfiller there's some um, PVA wood glue mixed in there as well so this is just to smooth out all the bumps I've created by hacking away at this fibre board. Still want the illusion of a lower level in the ground. Right, so that's that filled. We'll, we'll leave that to dry and then we'll probably give it a little bit of light sand and then we can paint it. I've been testing the colours for the mill. Um, as you can see I've got three different colours there. I've got matte 28 which is a, a grey. Um, we've got a, a matte 121 which is like a creamish brown. And then we've got the desert sand look of 314. Um, so I'm testing it on this piece of cone and I'm using the photograph as a guide but just remember that the sun is shining on this face here as you can see that's the the colour color there you know, in the halfway point before it goes into the shade so that's the colour I'm hoping to look for and I think the middle one the 121 is the colour I'm going to use for the mill so what I'll do, I'm going to paint the inside of the mill to start with and then I can glue this onto the base of the mill um, so I can match the footstep stones if you like with the stones here around the edge of the base so that's what I'm going to do now, I'm going to paint Right, I've painted the inside and you can barely see the lines that uh, are made on the inside. 
which is um, a bit concerning because I pressed them lines quite deep into the card so it makes you wonder how the outside is going to turn out when I come to paint that um, so what I might do is go over the whole lot again just to make sure I've pressed these stones quite hard into the card um, because I've done a, a little tester piece here on this bit um, and it don't well, don't look that clever at the minute but we shall see I'm now painting the base uh, I've painted the inside and I'm just painting the the walkway that goes around just on the outside but not going too far over that line as you can see just keeping in with the line there so this is going to form the path um, which goes around the mill the paint I'm using is a enamel matte 82 What I'll do is while that paint is wet in there, I'll just add some mixture of stones. Um, like we used for the ballast, so I'll just use a little bit of that in on the inside. I have now super glued the mill to the base after I had added the stone to the paint. Um, I did try to sand the polyfiller down but all it did was kept furring up the, um, the fibre board so I just decided to paint straight on top and then add the stone. So as you can see I'm adding this paint now and um I'll tell you what I quite like the look at this I wasn't a hundred percent sure especially after what happened on the inside but the inside now has had a little bit of time to dry and uh, as you can see the pen marks are starting to come through I don't know if you can see that there you go so I'm going to stick with it and uh I'm already liking the colour of this. I think I only might only need to put one coat on. But we shall see. We'll see how it um, pans out as it were. You notice I'm, I'm going with the stone and not up and down. putting it on quite light as well right so I've left this to dry overnight and uh, although it looks a bit patchy but I think that's what gives it its realism but what I might do I might just um, take that back a bit try and get it to, to blend in but yeah on the whole I'm happy with the way that that looks so now we're going to focus on the base which I'm going to do in a dark grey on these stones get the dark grey into all these crevices of the stonework and then I'll use the same paint I've used here to go over the top and then just wipe it off so the colour I'm going to use for that is a matte 27 um, it's quite a darkish greenish colour but I'm just going to get it right into the grooves and then we'll go over with the MAC 121 so I just want to get right in there as you can see that's looking good already but it's not the colour that I want so at the moment I just want to get into those stone work crevices I 
Right, so now I'm going to move back over onto the mat 121, um, the same mat that I used for there. So what I'm just going to do is, I've dipped it into the paint, so I'm going to take a little bit of that paint off, it's probably too much on there, and I'm just going to brush stroke it on there. So obviously because that stonework is closer to the ground there's going to be a lot of green in there. I'm just picking out the stones as it were, like so. Yeah, I quite like the look of that. That looks like it's going to work. Right, so I'm quite happy with that. I mean, that looks pretty good. It shows up virtually every single stone. So the next thing I want to do is to get right into that corner up against the, the stone wall of, of the mill um, and then put in some green blended turf. So in order to do that, I'll use a syringe and I'll just squirt some PVA glue around base of the mill. Right, so that's the easy part. Now the next bit is to just sprinkle some of this blended turf into the crevices and then push it in with a spatula, a glue spatula, all the way around. And then letting the PVA do its job. And we should end up with something like that. Right, so now we've done the inner circle, we can now concentrate on the outer circle. Cover up some of this brown paint and the fiberboard. So what I'm doing here is just a bead of PVA wood glue along that edge just right down to where it slopes away. Same again, using the coarse turf just to add some rough grass as it were. Because um, you can see I've already done this side and you can still just about make out the faint path that goes around the mill. Here we are back where we started um, but this time we have a mill in place. Um, so looking at it uh, I think I got the size proportions right um, yeah, there is a little bit of a slope either side if we look at it at this angle. Um, this was my original choice, remember? And uh, I think that would have looked too small. So, yeah. And here is the original photograph I based the mill on. 
So yeah, I'm quite happy with the way that that's turning out. So I think on that note, this is all we've got time for this week. Um, let me know in the comments what you think regarding um, where it is cited and does the story that we had at the beginning of the video make sense? I'll let you guys judge that and let me know in the comments. Right, until next time, have a great weekend and we'll see you again next week when hopefully we'll finish off the mill, give it a bit of weathering and um, finish off the, um, the scenic area around the mill just to give it a bit more depth. So there you are, a new building on the layout, the old mill or ye old mill. Thanks for watching now. Bye.